And we're back with more Kerbal Space Program. If you remember, I was having trouble getting one of those fuel line pieces that were floating around over here. I couldn't figure it out, so I just started a new spacecraft and rebuilt it the way it was before. So, good. Um, yeah, we've got our first stage up here. Oh, I didn't rebuild it the way it was before. I'm missing legs because we want to land. And without legs, that's not possible. Okay. <laughs> anyway, moving on. Um, let's take a fuel tank here, and a fuel tank here. Now I've got to decide what engine I want at the bottom. Um, this one has a max thrust of 215, if you see down there on the right, and a total mass of 1.25. This one is heavier, but thrusts less. But this one has thrust vectoring, and this one doesn't. I don't know what thrust vectoring is, so I don't know if I want that or not. Uh, let's just go with no. I don't really know what I'm doing here. Okay, so there's that bit. Now what I'm going to do is use some radial decouplers with six-way symmetry. And I want to stick those right here. Uh, the radial decouplers work in the same way that these do. Uh, you can separate your craft at this point, um, but these do so radially. So I can put tanks on these, and then when those tanks are empty, I can jettison them off the side of the ship. And putting tanks on them is exactly what I'm going to do. There we go. And I'll put six more under those. And then let's put some more engines because why not? Um, my plan here is to use these six, and then when they have exhausted their fuel supply, I will shoot them off the side and just be left with the centerpiece down here. And then when that's all gone, I can separate from this, and then I'll just have this. As I was talking about in the previous episode, um, we want our ship to get uh, less massive as the mission progresses. So this looks okay. Um, we can get even crazier uh, and stick more radial decouplers on the side and then go with some solid rocket boosters. Zoom out a little bit. Bam. So the solid rocket boosters will fire first, get us up into the air, and then I'll activate our liquid uh, engines, and then those will come off, and as I said, be left with the middle section. Um, oh, one thing that we'll probably want to do is stick nose caps on these guys so that we're a little bit more aerodynamic as we're flying upward. And... Okay. I'm kind of interested to see what this guy can do now. Let's... Oh, no. I know what we're missing. We're missing... Um, we need, like, wings and control surfaces and stuff to help. Uh, these, these are the things that the autopilot module, it uses all these control surfaces to help keep the, the ship oriented in the correct direction. So I need to make sure that... Um, let's try... is this thing going to fit? That's really big. Will it fit there? I hope that doesn't... these things move a bit, so I hope they don't hit these tanks, because that would not be good. Um, I guess I'll also try sticking these things here. They'll fall off with these boosters, but hopefully they'll be useful to us in the early stages of the flight, keeping us pointed upward. Uh, we should name this guy before we launch it. Uh, the Poner 1. That almost sounds like... never mind. Um, good. Let's head to the launch pad.
Okay, everything's just loading. Uh, you'll see this stage light down here is um, purple. Oh, I totally forgot something really important. I hope the game set it up the right way. Um, you can adjust the staging of the craft. Um, so it's broken up into stages, as you can see over here on the left. When we were in the vehicle assembly building, this thing was over on the right. Um, but the stages work from the bottom up. So this is stage 8. The first time I press the spacebar, uh, this stage will activate. The second time I press the spacebar, this stage will activate. Um, let me zoom in so you can get a better view here. The frame rate is terrible right now. Um, so this stage contains the solid rocket boosters and then the nose cones and the little winglet things on the side there. So when I press the spacebar for the first time, these boosters will activate. When I press the spacebar the second time, this thing right here, you'll see six there, that's the six radial decouplers that are holding onto the boosters. So this stage will shoot the boosters off the side of my craft. And then the next stage activates these rockets down here, the six of them, uh, that are connected to these 12 tanks. And then I think these are the nose cones on top. And then after that we've got the radial decouplers that are attaching these six tanks to the main body of the center there. Uh, and then the next stage is the engine in the center. And then we've got the regular decoupler, which is this guy right here, which will separate this section from the top section, and so on. I hope all that makes sense. Okay. I'm sorry I didn't go over that earlier. Uh, pressing shift will throttle up. Pressing control will throttle down. You'll see that right here. Uh, throttling only affects the liquid rocket engines. It has nothing to do with the solid rocket boosters. Basically, once you light these things, they just go full blast until they run out of fuel. Um, but I'm going to throttle up so that when I get to these engines, we're already at full throttle. Um, pressing T over here is going to activate the SAS system. That's that autopilot thing again. That, for some reason, is freaking out right now. But it, it manages the direction that all these things point to help keep the craft oriented properly. Um, and then pressing R over here uh, activates the RCS, which is those little thruster things that we stuck on the side. I've found that having the RCS active during launch can cause issues with the craft spinning around. I don't know if I'm doing something wrong, but whatever. Anyway, we've got our autopilot on. Uh, throttle up. I'm going to push the spacebar and see what happens. Oh dear. Um, oh my. There's a, quite a bit of flexing going on, and every... Oh, oh dear. This... This is bad. Oh dear. Spinning around. Um, yeah, that's not good. Oh my. Things collided. Our, our guy in there is having fun, though. Oh god. Oh, oh... <sighs> well, um, let's head back to the vehicle assembly building. Uh, I think <laughs> I think our problem uh, was that it was just flexing way too much as we took off, which I can fix with struts. Um, we'll need six-way symmetry. The struts just basically hold things together. So if I put some struts across like this, you'll see it added them to all, all six places. Um, I think that will keep the, the solid rocket boosters from flexing around and causing problems. So oh, this I guess should be Poner 2 because we lost the first one. Let's try this again. Okay, so get the throttle up so that we're ready for it and then let's launch okay that looks much better than last time we're not flexing anymore and we're heading straight up which is always a good thing you can see down here that the fuel in the solid rocket boosters is decreasing over time uh, right after it gets to the bottom they will stop 
flaming, and then I'll hit spacebar again to jettison them off the side. Almost there. Hitting some turbulence or something. Okay, got rid of those, and I've activated the next set of engines. Climbing up to almost 10,000 meters. You can see here there's a, a gauge that's showing how thick the atmosphere is. The game, the physics in this game are pretty accurate, and so the, they've modeled, you know, the air resistance of the lower atmosphere. As, as we get higher, there's going to be less and less air resistance pushing up against us. Um, as soon as these things run out, I'll get rid of them. Oh, they have another tank. Okay, so we're high enough now that I'm going to turn off my autopilot just for a second and try to turn myself... Oh dear. Stop spinning. Stop it. Stop it. This... This was maybe not the best idea. Oh, oh no. No, 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 Okay, I'm just going to turn the autopilot back on, because I I screwed that up. I'll get rid of those things now that they're out of fuel. Hopefully this will allow us to control the ship a bit better. Why are we spinning like crazy? Stop spinning. Stop it. Maybe the RCS will help us slow down. Okay, there we go. Now, we've got enough inertia that we'll probably keep heading upward for a bit still. So I'm going to... Nope, don't do that. Why is it being a silly face? I want to get us oriented on the on the 90... I'm using this nav ball down here. I want to get us on the 90 degree heading here. Hey, nope, nope. Stop it, stop it. Almost there. Almost, almost. Mm, 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 mm. Come on, come on. Right there. Okay, no, don't start spinning around. See, man, that RCS thing, I don't know about it. Anyway, I'm hitting M, and it's going to take us to the orbital map. So this projects our current orbit, which, as you can see, is going to take us right back down into the ocean, which we don't want. Um, but we do have enough inertia that it's going to get us all the way up here to roughly 260,000 meters. Um, so if we can get up here and then circularize our orbit cir circularize i don't know make make it make our orbit round is what i'm trying to say um i don't remember what i was trying to say anymore circularize screwed me up um <laughs> okay so basically i'm going to coast up to the apoapsis which is the highest point of our orbit and once i get up there i'm going to fire my thrusters again to try to get this orbit as circular as possible around the planet. I can I have keys here that allow me to speed up time warp so I don't have to wait until we get all the way up there. Um, once we get close we're almost there. That's pretty good. I'm gonna slow it back down, uh, head back over here, use this nav ball to make sure that we're still pointed the way I want to be pointed, and then thrust. Now I'm back here at the orbital map, and as we thrust, you can see that my orbit is expanding. Um, I can also bring up the nav ball here, and you can make adjustments to your heading without having to leave this map. And so I want to keep going full thrust until we've got a nice circular orbit here. I'm also running out of time again, so uh, I guess you'll just have to wait until the next episode to see whether or not we achieve a circular orbit. Oh no!